Common knowledge in biology is that sea urchins exclusively live in the ocean and have not made the evolutionary step on land. Is this true? Is this about to change? Welcome to Bakong on Negros Island in the Philippines. We have recently observed and filmed some really unusual sea urchin behavior. So we have recently had some very low tides and these tides have generated a sandbank where my little son Erwin is running along now. So to his right you can see the open ocean of course and to the left there are tide pools and they're separated from the open ocean and this had caused some really unusual behavior in some of the animals which were stuck in the tide pools. So here I'm filming a sea urchin, I believe the genus is Echinoitrix, and that sea urchin probably realized what the proper direction for it was to get out of the tide pool, to get into the open ocean where it wanted to be. It did not realize that because the tides were so low that now there was this sandbank. So as a consequence, it almost walked on land. So we almost had this at least momentarily amphibious or terrestrial sea urchin. Now, of course, take that statement with a grain of salt. Biology generally knows that there are no terrestrial, no land living sea urchins and there are very good reasons for that. We'll get to these reasons in a short while. So you can see that the urchin has a lot of energy and vigor to get you know, towards the open ocean when it goes into shallow and shallow water. The tube feet of these urchins are actually photosensitive. So you can think of the skin of the urchin, which is covered in tube feet, as one big primitive eyes, so it probably knew the direction it had to go. And here you can see its spines, which is probably using to move. They are, you know, still very active. And the, you can see that it's probably only in two or three centimeters of water. Now, very soon the level of activity of this urchin decreased. So now you can see that it's moving much, much slower. So the reason is there is this hydraulic system in the body of the sea urchin. It's this ambulacral system. And this ambulacral system is essentially powering the movements of these echinoderms. And without seawater, this just doesn't work anymore. So now it's really in only about a centimeter of water and it's but it has really essentially stopped moving so is this the first step of echinoderm of sea urchin evolution to make it on land like our um, early amphibian ancestor did in the devonian well i mean the, this is an analogy which would you know spring to your mind but it probably doesn't quite hold because the body of these urchins is just not made for that. So, you know, humans now, of course, uh, walk every day, everywhere they want to go to. Um, the, you know, walking is really our mode of transportation. And, you know, we evolved from fish, which are like this tickalic, which is a late Devonian, you know, a bridge crossing between fish and uh, amphibians. So, you know, our early land living ancestors uh, probably looked somewhat like this animal. And, you know, this was one of the main steps in evolution for vertebrates that we, we made it onto land. And from then on, all amphibians and reptilians, mammals and birds became land living organisms if they weren't secondarily uh, marine. Now, here again we can see these spines are in a close-up of the sea urchin and yes so the the locomotion system the system which conveys power onto these spines and 
tube feed is this a hydraulic system. You can see it here in blue and in, in dark pink. So these are the tube feed and the hydraulic system on the inside of this urchin. And this just does not work if the urchin is on dry land. So while our ancestors essentially came with fins, which were really predestined uh, to become legs, so they, they were a great evolutionary starting point. These urchins were equipped with a locomotory system which just doesn't work outside of the water. So I don't think we'll see terrestrial sea urchins. Have a good day and uh, see you back soon.